In today's video, we're going to talk about the properties of metals and nonmetals. Metals, they're conductors. They can conduct heat and electricity. Nonmetals are insulators. For the most part, many of them do not conduct heat and electricity. But there are some exceptions. For instance, carbon in the form of graphite can conduct electricity. And another allotrope of carbon in the form of diamond is an excellent conductor of heat. Diamond conducts heat, but not electricity. But the majority of nonmetals, they don't conduct electricity. They tend to be insulators, although there are a few exceptions. So common examples of metals include aluminum, iron metal, copper, silver, gold. Now these two, copper and silver, they're typically used as wires in a lot of electrical devices. Copper and silver are very good conductors of electricity. Even gold as well, but gold is expensive. Examples of nonmetals include oxygen gas, the air that we breathe, nitrogen gas, which makes up most of atmospheric air. About 79% of the air is nitrogen, about 20% is oxygen. Chlorine, that's a nonmetal, it doesn't conduct electricity. Think of helium gas, perhaps you've seen those helium balloons that rises up. Sulfur is a, a nonmetal. None of those conduct electricity. Now, metals, they tend to be very shiny. They have a metallic luster. Nonmetals are usually dull. They don't have that same metallic luster that metals do. Most metals tend to be hard. They don't break easily. Nonmetals, the majority of them, are usually brittle in their solid form. Now, there are some metals that are soft, particularly the alkali metals like sodium and potassium. You can cut them with a knife, but the majority of metals, they tend to be hard. Now, metals have another property. They're also malleable. This means that they can be hammered into flat sheets. Metals are also ductile. They can be pulled or drawn into wires. Now, metals have another property. Most metals are reducing agents. Reducing agents, they like to give away electrons. Nonmetals tend to be oxidizing agents. Think of the word oxygen. Oxidizing agents, they like to take electrons as opposed to give away electrons. So here's an ex a reaction that can illustrate this. Aluminum is a reducing agent. When aluminum gives away its three valence electrons, it will form a three plus charge or positive three charge. Another example is iron metal. When iron metal gives away two electrons, it will form the Fe2 plus ion. So as you can see, metals are reducing agents. They like to give away electrons, and in the process of doing so, they will form positively charged ions known as cations. Nonmetals are the opposite. They like to take electrons. So chlorine gas is an oxidizing agent. When it takes two electrons, it's going to form an ion with a negative charge. And the same is true for oxygen. But oxygen will form ions with a negative two or two minus charge. And negatively charged ions 
are known as anions. So metals tend to form cations, nonmetals tend to form anions. Metals tend to have relatively high melting points and boiling points. Nonmetals tend to have low melting and boiling points compared to metals. Calcium, for instance, has a melting point of 842 and a boiling point of 1484 degrees Celsius. Oxygen, on the other hand, has a melting point of negative 219 degrees Celsius and a boiling point of negative 183. So most nonmetals, they tend to have low melting points and boiling points, whereas metals usually have uh, much higher multi points and boiling points, but there are exceptions. For instance, sodium has a relatively low melting point of 98. Its boiling point is pretty high, 883. Sulfur has a higher melting point than sodium. Its melting point is 115. Its boiling point is 445. But this is low relative to calcium. Tungsten has an extremely high melting point, 3,422. Its boiling point is 5,930. Iodine is another nonmetal, which is solid at room temperature. Its melting point is 114, very close to sulfur. Its boiling point 184. Graphitic carbon, graphite, has a very high melting point. Its melting point is above 3,000 degrees Celsius. So this is what is known as a network covalent solid. These are known as molecular solids. Molecular solids, nonmetals that are molecular solids tend to have low melting points and boiling points. But nonmetals that are network covalent solids like graphite and diamond, they have extremely high melting points. So most nonmetals have low melting points and boiling points, but there are some exceptions. Gallium is a metal that can melt in your hand. Its melting point is very low. It's 30 degrees Celsius. Its boiling point very high. So there are some metals that have low melting points. Mercury, it's a liquid metal, but the majority of metals, they have high melting points and boiling points. And the majority of nonmetals, particularly the molecular solids, they have low melting points and boiling points. But the covalent solids, the network covalent solids, they have a very high melting point for nonmetals.